<laughs> if you're happy and you know it, say amen. My daughter likes to sing that song at 10 o'clock at night when it's time to go to sleep. Did it happen last night? Yeah. <clears throat> this this uh, this morning, my wife and I were getting ready in the bathroom, and she's like, "Aaron, what is that sound?" <laughs> and we're like, "I can't hear anything." <laughs> it was silent. I mean, you could hear the humidifier on low, three rooms away. They're <laughs> like. She's like, I'm not so sure I like it this quiet. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so the, the rest of the story is um, Bishop and Reverend Connie um, was watching our children this weekend. And so they were experiencing the other volumes of sound that happen in a home. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could. <clears throat> I'm bigger than you. I can talk louder than you. I'm taller, too, so the sound will carry. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. How many brought a Bible? Yeah. I brought my Bible. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> it looks like people online even brought their Bible. That's a good thing. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Now, I don't know. Are we in the front or the back or the middle? I mean, it's, you know, you know, it's just, you know. Anyway, Isaiah chapter 40. <laughs> and... Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. Verse 1 says this, Comfort, yes, comfort my people. Says your God. So God is telling Isaiah to comfort the people. Now this has got to be probably one of his most exciting times to communicate with the people. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. <laughs> Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway to our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth, and the Lord and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I love it when the King James Version tries to translate what God says. God was trying to explain something to his people. And how many here talk exactly like God does? And so when he speaks, it's very possible. It, it, it may not make sense immediately. Sometimes his ways are higher than our ways. Have you not known, verse 28, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? How many has felt like God? Hmm, no, I felt like human. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. 
verse 29. Even the youths, youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. How many here is a young man? But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Hmm. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What are we talking about? We are working on our testimony. I, um, I got home from church and last week and went to work on some stuff and I ended up putting this all together and, and, I, and I thought, hmm, great. I love it when God wants me to talk about something good because now I'm going to get tested in that. That's fantastic. <laughs> I heard everybody going, man, that's bad. I had to overcome. I thought about quitting, wanted to give up. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, I'm not saying a word. I'm not talking about it. I'm not, no. And then I'm talk God, you know, dropped this message title and and I, you know, I have some, you know, alternate titles and alternate focuses, you know. <clears throat> First I thought, let's call it well, here's your sign. But I wasn't sure if that was grammatically going to translate through. And um, so anyway, here is my sign. What is your sign? We talked about a little bit Wednesday about making your sign. It's a lot of work to make a sign. You got to cut it out and paint it and put actual things on it, a message on it for others to read. And I thought, well, what, what would be a sign and a wonder to this earth today? What would be a sign and a wonder that I could demonstrate in front of them every day? I, uh, I put down, can't find no rest as my focus, the B one. Then I changed it to the positive, finding rest. But in a world that cannot find peace, that cannot find rest, a sign would be a human being who can find peace and can find rest. As I began to meditate on those things, the atmosphere changed. How many here has ever watched a storm come in? And you think, I better put away everything I want to keep because when it gets here, it's going to blow everything that's not bolted down away. Some people get excited about that and they, they think, great, I can upgrade my trash cans. <laughs> Just let that one that's all bad go and I'll pick up a new one because I really like the neighbor's trash can. Hope he doesn't put his patio furniture away because I have been wanting that for weeks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, rest. Yeah. If the hot tub blows away, you may not have it filled up enough. <clears throat> But in this time and season, what does the enemy come to do? He comes to steal your testimony. He comes to destroy your testimony. He comes to get you to give up your testimony. And so I went from, everything is going fantastic. How many has ever just had two good days in a row? <laughs> and then you had another two good days in a row, you know? And, and then... I, I wanted to work on this testimony, this what would be a representation to the world 
And you, believe it or not, all hell would break loose. You know, that's our spiritual term. But how many here ever then had problems and emotion and struggled with life? How many here has ever struggled with life? How many has ever wanted to be like, I'm done? What's the new phrase? I'm done adulting. I'm just, it's too hard. I can't adult today. Yeah, there's no R in there. Adulting. And... uh, Well, yeah, it would be good to quit adultery, but didn't have to quit that, thankfully. Um, but I'm, all of a sudden now, there is opposition. What does the enemy do? He tries to hinder us from overcoming. Well, if, if he can get us to stop overcoming, then guess what? We stay where we are. And we do not move forward, we do not progress. How many has, you know, ever had a bad day? And in that bad day, how many here has struggled with the Ten Commandments? (laughs) I've never had a bad day. Right. Stop lying and then we'll be able to move on. (laughs) There's this very real possibility that you will have an opportunity to overcome. And you get to choose what you do with that choice. I want you to be able to say, here's my sign. I overcame. I found rest. I found what peace really is. Peace is is not, I don't have a problem. Peace is not. How many has ever thought, well, when I finally get that done, or I finally get this in my life, or, you know, uh, let me pick on Minister uh, Riley. When I finally get married, then I won't have any problems. That young man believed that since we were talking in the back room of my house and he, we were like 17 years old. He helped God out a lot at, you know, making that happen. And then finally that day came. Well, God, if only then I had a house. Oh, oh God... Do you, ever, do you understand the enemy just puts the carrot, a new one, farther away and says, that'll be the day you have peace. That'll be the day that you'll, it'll all work out. Do you understand that will continue forever? So we have to decide, what will I do now? Because when I get to there, it will be now. So I need to practice for there what I'm going to do now. If I want to be an overcomer, I need to practice now. Now, I'm not going to wait for God to change the situation. I'm not going to wait for the problem to go away. I'm going to practice right now being an overcomer. And what do I need to overcome? It's very possible you may have to overcome not wanting to kill. I mean, it wouldn't have been, if if it wasn't a big deal, God wouldn't have put it on the top ten. I mean, he'd have dumped it to the other 600 if it was that obvious. But because it's possible we may come into confrontation with other human beings... Monday morning came. Oh my. And I was trying to find my sign, but I, I was ready to burn it um, and offer up a sacrifice. <laughs> you know, what, what do you have to overcome? 
What will the enemy get others to say or to do out of what? Selfishness. To cause you to then retaliate and then give up or sacrifice your testimony. You know, we was doing school and, and, and my son, we had quite a day. We had quite a couple hours. After it was all over, he came and, you know, we asked if, if I would forgive him. And I said, not right now. I don't want to forgive you right now. You hurt me. And your words have consequences. And so right now, no, I'm not. What? But I need you. You didn't need me two hours ago. What changed? Now you have my emotions. I'm wanting to control the situation. Someone else is trying to control the situation. And uh, you know what? The flesh will say things it doesn't mean. Or it'll say things it means that it probably shouldn't say. Where is our sign to this world when those moments happen? Because they will. I, God would not have put the Tenth Commandment on there, and it would have just been the Nine Commandments, if selfishness would not be an issue with human beings. What will our testimony be when that test comes? Will we overcome or will we let it overcome us? John the Baptist was having a bad day. John the Baptist, I mean, he had, everything was going great. I mean, he didn't have a great meal every day. I mean, locusts and honey, I don't know. Depends on if you're into that stuff or not. <clears throat> um, but he is now... In prison, how many has had a bad day? Not quite as bad as John's. And it says this, Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his twelve disciples that he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Have you ever questioned your choices on the bad day? I mean, for crying out loud, John the Baptist baptized him. He was there when the Spirit of God came and, and dwelt in that fleshly body called Yeshua. How many's been to church and felt the presence of God? How many's been healed and then the bad day comes and you're going, are you God or not? I'm not sure. Just help me be sure of this. And Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the dead, uh, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. You know, this earth paints Jesus as this very calm, nice, kind, non offensive human being. But if you really read what he's saying, it's very possible that selfishness will get offended by what he says. I mean, his disciples had some intense opportunities to decide what are they going to do. And, and John was questioning, I mean, is this it or not? Because right now I'm in prison for what I've been doing. Verse 
Verse 25, it says this, And at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise. From the wise. And prudent and have revealed it to the babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. There's a lot of people that have gotten success. A lot of people have accomplished great things. They've gathered riches. They've, you know, they've, they've worked really hard and they found success on this earth. But they've not really understood the secrets of the kingdom of God. It was hidden from them. You, you look across and you, you look at these people and they, they really don't need God in their life because everything is okay. And, and the truth of, of what God is and, and the relationship with God, it, they don't even know it's available. They don't recognize they need it. It's hidden from them. Why, do we th why does Jesus say, blessed is he who is... All of those things, those were all bad day things. Those were tough. Those were challenges. Those were, it's not going well. And he said, blessed are you in that condition. What? I want to be like this other person who doesn't need God. I mean, when I really get to that place where I don't really need God and everything is okay, then I really will have gotten it figured out. But they don't say that. They say, when I have everything that I need, my bills are all paid, and I have lots of money to do anything I want, and I, can, I, I have freedom. And Verse 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. What are we doing? We're working on our sign. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus kind of flips our concept of life upside down. John the Baptist had to decide is this who I'm going to stake my life on? If this earth is going to see a sign, then I have to truly find a relationship with God that puts me in a position that I can overcome every day. I need to know what real rest is. If we really get to know God, we'll find what real rest is. We have very possibly thought, well, rest is not having to work. But Jesus was talking about a yoke. I'm not sure a yoke, um, yoke is not vacation. A yoke is not the absence of labor. He's not saying rest is the absence of a problem. You will still have to overcome, but in 
a relationship with God, you're not doing it in the flesh anymore. Right. You're no longer subject to those things, and now you can overcome those things. But in the flesh, the bad day, the things to overcome, it's more than you can bear. Hebrews. It's quiet in here. I don't have as many jokes today. Hebrews chapter 3 in verse 16. Hebrews chapter 3 in verse 16. This little section is called Failure of the Wilderness Wanderers. Chapter 3, verse 16. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with them who he was angry forty years, was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to him did he swear that they would not enter his rest. But to those who did not obey... See, we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. I, I want to enter into God's rest. I want to have his peace. I want to have a testimony, but my unbelief will keep me in bondage. My unbelief will keep me from overcoming. It will hinder my ability. Therefore, since a promise, chapter 4, verse 1, remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Let's not miss out on what God's intention is for our life. Verse 2, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest as he has said. God has a promised land. Unbelief keeps us from that place. Every day we're beginning a journey. Will I reach the promised land today? Will I reach the place God has for me today? Or will unbelief keep me from overcoming? Verse 7, it says, Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, ever after such a long time as it has been, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another, of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. There's a powerful thing that we really truly have to wrap our minds around when it comes to Sabbath. I like to just shut my computer off at Sabbath. Because I do a lot of my work on the computer, and it, there's always that, well, you know, I could just get one more thing done. But if it's off, it's too hard to turn back on, and so we... We get a perspective when we stop trying... Because as long as we're trying, we're not 
communicating with God. Because I'm doing it. Man, how many here have ever tried to solve your wife's problems? Because that's our purpose, right? <laughs> and it's very possible that may not be what they need. <laughs> they may need me to have a sign. Uh, I may need to have a sign that now, how many, they encounter something to overcome. And what do we want to do? Run it over with a bulldozer and back up. I mean, just, who dares? I mean, who dares to give my wife a hard time? I will lay you out. And I'm going to use a D10 to do it, you know? You know, I mean, it may not need that. I mean, but do you ever get like, and then all of a sudden you're now talking to your spouse like you would want them to talk to the person who's giving them a hard time, and now you're absolutely attacking them like they're the person. <laughs> thinking, I'm helping them. I am solving the problem. They feel so much better because now they know how passionate I am about them. And they're like, that's not helping at all. <laughs> I, I sometimes read the silence when my wife doesn't speak after I've helped her. Because <laughs> now that didn't help at all, and now she has to actually go figure out a solution to the problem. Because that was, that was my flesh responding. That was my emotions responding. That wasn't me resting in a wise understanding or, or taking upon his yoke, I was going to fix the problem. How many here has ever wanted to fix the problem? Because you're like, for crying out loud, God, you're not doing anything about it. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, God, you need to do something. And if you're not, I will. You're never going to see your mother again, Jesus, if you do not do what needs to be done. I don't want a bike. I just, yeah. what, what is the thing that we're trying to fix and God's not fixing it fast enough? What is the thing that we're trying to overcome and, and we and God are not working together on? God has promised that he would give us rest. The question is, do we know how to receive it? Do we know how to work with God? What will be a sign? A sign to our spouse? Because what would it be like when stuff happens and we didn't respond in the flesh, but we responded with waiting on the wisdom of God and hearing his voice and, and that still small voice and we said no to the flesh and we, we allowed self-control to dictate our actions and our responses. What kind of sign would that be? See, we're looking for, well, there are miraculous signs that will help an unbeliever believe, but what will they do about their life and when they face their time to overcome? Will there be an example for them when they're like John in prison? When they're dealing with their children, when they're having to overcome someone who comes against them, Someone, you know, made a false accusation against my wife and said, you did this. And she's like, no, I did not do that. In fact, here's the document that proves you did that. That was not me. How 
will we respond when people make mistakes and blame us for their mistakes? What will be a sign to them that God is in me? How will this earth see God? He's going to see it through us. But if I'm not responding as God will respond, what will they see? They will see my flesh. They will see my shortcomings. They will see my failure. Even youth faint and utterly fail. What was Isaiah talking about? I don't think I'm going to ride on an eagle's back. I don't think that was the actual thing that I was going to do, but it would be to rise above the situation to be able to see really what was taking place and to have wisdom on what to say and how to say it. And that's what I desire, to not be confused in the moment and overwhelmed in the moment by emotion, but be able to recognize this is the enemy coming to get me to give up my testimony. When I begin to see that and, and, and see clearly, now I'm able to respond effectively. This year we are going to be able to see better. There are some walls in people's lives and I need to be able to see clearly. Well, I will not be able to see clearly if I'm still struggling to overcome this flesh yoke. If I run to go and help people and I try to do it in my own understanding and in my own flesh, it'll be too heavy. I will not be able to help them overcome without the Spirit of the living God helping me. And if, if I don't have that working in my very own life, <laughs> there's no chance in, in eternity that I'm going to help them overcome. What is this relationship with God all about? Now, I... To help me overcome the same thing Satan had to overcome when he had a bad day. God, I will do it myself and I will do it better. I will exalt my throne above yours because I have a better idea. I really know what's going on. You haven't done anything about it. You're just sitting there on your throne at rest. Verse 11, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This living word will help us really reach another soul. Yeah. Right past all of the, the, the walls that have been made and created to protect themselves from whatever flesh has done to them what church has done to them. There is, a, there is a lot of people that have been hurt by, quote, quote, church. Because church in the flesh has not delivered them. Church in the flesh has hurt them. What is, what is this community in need of? A human being that has the living word of God that's powerful, 
that cuts through the lies and the, and the walls that the enemy has got them to build up that keeps them from overcoming. Yeah. That gives them a reason why they shouldn't. That it's safer to stay where they're at. And it divides the, the spirit and the soul and it, it, it gets right in there and it helps deal with things that have never been dealt with. Verse 13 says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. Verse 14, Seeing that we have been a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, and yet without sin. One powerful statement that Bishop made back, I don't know, before tabernacles or in tabernacles, and in understanding this, and John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And at that moment, how many know, that's when the Spirit of God came and descended upon him. So what did he do for the first portion of his life? He did all of God's instructions. That's... That's the powerful thing. That's what got him to the place that the Spirit of God could come and stay. Now you think, well, man, I can't do that. That's why he came and did it. Because I couldn't. But now the game has changed. Now there's a different option for me. He's paid a price. Now I can, because I have been forgiven, I can right now in this very moment choose that I will keep God's instructions. I can choose that from this moment on I will do that. And now I have the opportunity to step into a different place. I can step into a place of rest, a place of peace, a place where His presence dwells, and I can overcome the flesh, the thing that would make me break all of God's instructions. What will be a sign? What will be a sign to this earth? Humans overcoming their flesh and able to take the word of God and to see past and through their wall and make a way for them to come out of that, to step out of that bondage, to, to overcome that fear, that lie of the enemy. Yeshua has, I'm saying it wrong, aren't I? Yeshua. Yeshua. It, He's given me an opportunity to overcome bad habits. There, there's this opportunity for me to have a relationship with Almighty God like He did. You know, a relationship with God that was so strong that when sin entered in His life, there was an absence of God. He had never known the absence of God before. Have we been close enough to God that we would know His absence? Would, would, will we step past our flesh, overcome enough that we would actually be in the presence of the living God? 
to the point that we would not want to be without it. That the things of this earth, the things of this world would not hold a, a candle. It would not hold any draw anymore. Yeah. If we have never felt his absence, then it's very possible we've never really, really, really felt his presence. Because if I come to church and I have a goosebump one moment and then I go home and I, and, and I want to kill my child because our emotions are at war, then it's possible I have not really gotten out of the flesh. Because I'm still carrying the wrong yoke. What will be a sign to those who need to overcome in this next season? Are we looking for, what is the world looking for? Peace on earth. No problems, and then I'll be happy. No conflict, no situations to deal with. Everything is just fine. And then, then, then I can enjoy life. I'm, fr I'm sorry, friends, that probably is not going to happen until the war is over. So what are we going to do until that? Well... I'm going to have to have peace on earth despite no peace in the earth. Yes. Yes, what will be a sign when the fight, the turmoil, the, 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 the situation arises? What will be a sign that we turn and we hear from God? In my Monday afternoon struggle, you know, things, things come in such a way to knock you down. You know, waves in the ocean, they come in sets. I got up Monday and my daughter wasn't feeling good and she, was, she didn't know how to tell me what was wrong and so really her stomach was upset and she let me know by putting her whole banana and the bottle of water on my bed. And um, I thought, okay, now I understand what the problem is. Now I know why you were having, why well, you were uncomfortable. Your stomach hurt. In that process, now the enemy says, well, you're dealing with this. Now you're frustrated and uh, you got a, a mess to clean up. And um, how many here likes people who, you know, just, vomit all over um, your small place of comfort and peace, right? <laughs> and then now, words are spoken. I want this. I don't want this. I... We have to realize in those moments, we need to talk to God. Help me, Heavenly Father. What is your will in this moment? Because right now I want to quit. I am overwhelmed. I cannot accomplish this. I can't take care of these problems. Why? It would be easier to not deal with all of this. This yoke is too much. How many has ever looked at life and thought, this is too much? It's too much in my own understanding. It's too much in my own knowledge. It's too much in my own wisdom. But if I could just see what really is taking place, the too much becomes now I have an answer for it. His yoke comes with an answer. 
And so time went on and I began to realize, wow, I'm fighting, I'm just fighting the flesh. And the flesh is just trying to get what the flesh wants. I don't need to fight the flesh. I have to help them overcome what the flesh wants. There's all these things in between all of that that's attacking me and my very core of who I am and what I'm trying to be because they're just trying to get what they want, whether or not that's what they need or not. And so what's rising up on wings like eagles? Just stepping out of this, the emotion of the situation and being attacked by the people you love and realizing what the enemy is trying to do, how he's trying to, what's your situation? What's, what, what did the enemy do in your life and around your life this week that caused you to be overcome? What will be your sign? When those days come, you wait on the Lord. What does that mean? I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let God fix it. No. I am going to decide not to respond in the flesh, but I am going to hear the direction. I'm going to see what God sees. I'm going to understand really what's taking place in this very moment that I would have an answer. And then when I have the right answer, guess what? I pass my test and I get my money. I don't. <laughs> I, I, I have an overcoming story that now I'm able to have. It's mine now. Because I took on his yoke and I overcame what was overcoming me. I have peace in this earth when there's no peace around me. <laughs> I'm not saying we can't be humans. I guarantee you, you will be human tomorrow. And realize the enemy doesn't come after those who are not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. If you are experiencing a test, if you are experiencing resistance to life, he's not going to do that unless you would threaten what he's trying to do. You have a testimony for everyone who needs to learn how to overcome. You've overcome things. John overcame some tough things. But yet there come a, a day and a moment where he had to decide, okay, I will continue to overcome. But he didn't have to overcome in his flesh. He had to overcome his thoughts. He had to overcome how he responded to the situation. When we don't believe God, we don't receive the benefits that God has for us. I'm working on my sign. How many has struggled with the cutout? What shape do I make it? Is it a circle or a triangle or a square? Or what am I going to put on my sign? What will be my, this is what God has done in my life. You get ready to, to stand that sign up. And I tell you what, the enemy is going to go, I'm going to lose. Yep. Because they're going to make a sign that all kind of people are going to be able to read and it's going to point them to the truth. 
I can't let them get that sign up because once they put that sign up, people will see it. This, what is it? The creature is earnestly waiting, yearning for a representation. It, it's waiting for the sons of God to say, I have a sign. And here is the sign. I overcame the flesh. The flesh did not dictate my actions, but I chose the voice of the Father and now the Father is in me, and, and He's doing things through me. How will we do greater works than His Son did? <laughs> it won't be in the flesh. It'll be by His Spirit. Father, we desire to Know the difference of when your spirit is with us and when it's absent. We desire to know you like Jesus knew you. That when sin would enter in our life, when missing the mark would enter in, and we would recognize when you have to leave until we repent that we would recognize the difference of when you are not there. Why do you leave? So that we will change. We live in a world where no one can find rest, no one can find peace. There's still searching and looking for it. God, we desire to find that and to grab hold of that. And real rest is knowing you. Real rest is having a relationship with you. And despite what we face, what we uh, are up against, we have a solution. We have an understanding that causes us to be free in the situation and we're able to to overcome, to no longer be drowned by what's happening to us, but to be able to rise above it and to overcome it. If today you need help painting your sign, if you need help putting the sign on the post, if, if you want me to pray for you, then I want to pray for you. God desires to dwell with you. Well, dwelling with you means he's going to help you in life. So this altar is open online if you want to chat in. And, and you know, the best thing we can do is ask God for help when we need his help. So we're going to worship. If you want prayer, then I want to pray with you. All of us must really fall in love with God. Really come to a place where I love Him more than anything else. And if He wasn't in my life, if if his presence wasn't there, it would affect me. I would know and sense the difference because on that journey, I didn't even know I'd lost my way. Well, I want you to know the very moment when you've lost your way so that you can respond accordingly, so that you can choose to say, I have lost connection with my God, my creator, and I must reestablish it. Father, forgive me. I repent. I change my way. Help me overcome so that I might be reconnected with the one who loves me. That that would be 
our sign to this earth a real relationship with God that helps me overcome.